I have been in two car accidents, one more serious than another. Well, it depends on how you consider something to be serious. What is serious? And I'll let you decide. But I want to tell you about my two car accidents. Now, I have not driven a car in about 10 years. Well, I've, I've driven a car, but I haven't owned a car and regularly driven a car in about 10 years. But between the ages of 16 and 20, I had a car, I drove all the time, and in that time period, I got in two car accidents. And each one has a story attached to it that I think is pretty interesting. And I'd like to tell you about both of my, both of my car accidents. Now, by the way, the reason that I don't drive now is not because I was into car accidents. Maybe it is unconsciously. Who knows? Maybe I don't understand myself. That's a possibility. But I think it's not. <laughs> I think it's because I live in a big city where having a car is actually an inconvenience. So when I was 16, I had a car to drive right away. Actually, it was a truck. Because now 16 in America is the age when you get your driver's license. You can, okay? So I had a car ready, a truck ready for me because it had been given to me by my brother. Now, let me quickly explain that. People think, oh, you have a car right away. Wow, you must have had money to buy one. No, I had some money and my brother, this was when I was maybe 14, my brother wanted to make a movie. He was always making movies and his movies were always very expensive for some reason. <laughs> and he said, hey, can I borrow? I think I had $1,000 or $2,000 maybe. I don't remember exactly. He borrowed it from me and uh, I said, yes, okay, well, I will let you borrow this money. But first, you have to sign a contract. I've always been tough with that kind of stuff. And in the contract, it said, if you miss one payment, you have to give me your car. No questions asked. That's a pretty tough rule, right? And he signed the contract, I think, assuming, man, he'll never really do it. He's my brother. But he missed a payment and I took his truck. He's two years older than me. He had been driving for a while. <laughs> and when he came to my parents and said, hey, Luke's saying I, I have to give him my truck. This is crazy. And I, I, I said, look, at the, here's the contract. He signed it. Look at it. And uh, they said, yeah, Gabe, you shouldn't have signed that contract. <laughs> you signed it. <laughs> so I got a free car. So when I was 16, I had a truck to drive and I drove it everywhere. I, I was always driving around. I loved to drive. I still love to drive, I think. Maybe I don't. I, I haven't really done it that much recently. But one time I was driving home from somewhere. I don't remember. And I was approaching a stoplight, an intersection. And uh, this was not actually in my hometown. This was in a, a city that was next to about 10 miles away from my hometown. And I was approaching a stoplight and there was a gas station at the intersection. So on the left side, as you were coming up to the stoplight, there's a gas station. This is a very common thing to have a gas station at an intersection, right? So the gas station is on my left across the other lane. There's an opposite lane. I'm approaching the stoplight. I'm going to stop at the stoplight because it's red. And then I'm going to go straight. That's my plan. So as I was approaching the stoplight, slowing down, I saw a shape getting larger suddenly beside me. And so I remember this as clearly as if it were happening right now. I was listening to a song by Elton John called Tiny Dancer. Okay? Tiny Dancer is a very famous song by Elton John. And as I looked over this shape, I realized was a car. And in the car, two faces, I remember both faces clearly that I recognized. In fact, two of my high school classmates 
who are in a class two years older than me. They had already graduated high school. I was still in school. And I remember seeing both of their faces get closer to me. The driver of the car had pulled out, crossed the opposite lane, and was trying to get into my lane to go through the same intersection, probably to go to the town that we both lived in, right? This is someone from my hometown. We were in a different town. We were both there. So I thought that was weird. And I was thinking this as it was happening. Oh, that's weird that he's in this town and not in the other town. What a, what a strange coincidence to see him here. This is as he's moving toward me, as I can see obviously that he's going to hit me. I knew that he was going to hit me because he, he hadn't checked clearly. He was pulling out too quickly. He was moving too fast and he was starting to turn left and I just, I knew it was going to happen. But there was nothing I could do. Couldn't get out of the way. It was happening too fast. So he hit me right on my driver's side door and it seriously dented the door. The whole side of the car came in. I was shifted to the right, but I wasn't shifted to the right in a violent, it didn't feel like a violent way. It didn't feel like I'm being injured. I'm being hurt. I realized later that I was being hurt. I hurt my neck and I hurt my back a little bit, a little bit. It wasn't serious. But as it was happening, I thought, oh, this isn't so bad. <laughs> this is this isn't so serious. <laughs> as I was as I was sliding over my truck, then because he hit me so hard, started to spin. And so my truck spun into the intersection. Now, this could have been dangerous because if other cars had been coming, then they might have hit me. And that could have been even more serious. So I just remember this very distinct impression of my first, these two faces that I know coming toward me. And then the truck, my, I'm spinning around. At the same time, Elton John is singing Tiny Dancer. And I'm just spinning in the intersection out of control. <laughs> and, and, then, uh, and then I slowly came to a stop. And that moment is frozen in my memory now forever. So we both got out of the car. And the driver came up to me. He was a high school classmate who had been very mean to me at certain times in high school. You could say a bully at times. And call me immature, if you like. Maybe I am. Maybe I was. I don't know. But I never really forgave him for being a bully to me, right? And he came up to me and said, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Oh, I think I think I'm okay. Oh, yeah, maybe I'm not. I don't know. Uh, he said, I'm so sorry. It was an accident. Obviously, it was an accident, but it was obviously his fault. He wasn't trying to say it was my fault. So obviously his fault. I was barely moving, right? He was coming at me. So everybody knew it was his fault. He said, yeah, I'm so sorry. I didn't see you. I didn't see your your, your car there. Uh, just please, let's take care of this right now and not call the police. And I said, why? Because you're supposed to, if you have a car accident, call the police. The, the police are supposed to come make a police report and then you take care of the insurance and all that stuff. And if you don't have the police report, you can't do the insurance, right? So he, he was very upset. He was almost crying. And he said, please, because I, I was in a car accident, I had another accident and a couple of tickets in the past. If we call the police, I could lose my license. I'm probably going to lose my license if I have another accident. Now, the first thing that was going on in my mind here was, oh, I remember this guy was used to bully me. Why would I do something nice for this guy? He said, please, let's, we will, I promise you, I promise you, I will take care of this. I will pay you back for it. I promise 100%. Just please don't call the police. Now, my first thought was, and I guess I was kind of a responsible teenager. If I do this, now the burden is on me for me being hit now, I bear the burden of trying to call this guy and getting him to pay me back for the damage to my car. My, the next few months of my life are going to be miserable because I did a nice thing for this person who just hit me with his car, who was a bully to me in high school. 
So I thought the pragmatic thing to do would be to not do that. So I said, uh, I'm sorry, no, we're going to call the police. They're going to come. And that's what we did. So we called the police. The police came. They did a police report. Uh, he was crying. He was still very upset. Uh, the other guy, his friend, was in the car. I don't know if he was crying, but he was he was very upset. And then it was okay. After that, the insurance stuff was very easy to do. I got enough money to buy a new car. Not a brand new car, but I mean a new secondhand car. And... Uh, it was very easy to take care of to do the insurance claims. His insurance paid for uh, the car because that's how it works. It's called collision insurance. The other, the driver who's to blame is the one who pays. He doesn't have to pay, but his insurance paid. And uh, I got money for a new car and uh, that was it. Everything was fine. It was very easy. So my takeaway from that was never forgive anyone. No. Uh, no, my takeaway for that, my takeaway from that was, is you have to let processes actually work, right? In a moment of uncertainty and emotional trauma, it's, it's easy to just let things slide, but you have to know what consequences those things are going to have in six months, three months. And I definitely was glad that I had called the police because that is what allowed me to contact the insurance company and so on. So that was my first car accident. Very clear. My second car accident. All right. So my second car accident was with a girlfriend and it was in her car and I was driving. So there was this girl I really liked in high school and I, we didn't, we didn't actually date in high school, but then after high school, when I was in university, we did, I don't remember exactly how it happened, but we did. And I, we went to different universities. I went to one about three hours away. And I, and I think it was maybe a month or two after we had started dating, she came to visit me at my university where I was going to school. And we decided to drive to a place about, an, about two hours away for some reason. I don't remember why. Just to go hang out in another city. And so we did that. And it was in her car. Should we take your car or my car? I think we just took her car because it was better for driving long distances, maybe. I don't remember exactly. So I was driving her car, and it was starting to get quite cold. Now, one thing that happens when it's cold is that sometimes on the roads, you get what's called black ice. Now, black ice is ice you can't really see. It looks like it's black top looks it looks like it's the the road but it's not the road it's a thin layer of ice that you can't see it's not white right so it's quite dangerous so we visited that shopping center i don't really remember much of what happened we were on the way back i don't really remember much of what happened on the way back and i was driving for some reason and i changed from one lane there was a big truck a semi truck driving on one lane and i was on the, on the faster lane, in the left lane, passing the truck. And then it was time to come back to the same lane as the truck, ahead of the truck. But what I didn't realize, what I didn't realize, was that there was a patch of black ice that I couldn't see. So when I went from the left lane to the right lane, the wheels couldn't grab anything. And so we just suddenly started spinning off the side of the road. Now, luckily, we were spinning and didn't flip over. I don't know how we didn't flip over, but we, we landed in the grass beside the road. We didn't flip over. The semi-truck we had just passed barely missed us. That could have been a really, really terrible disaster. That could have been really bad. The, the truck, the huge truck that was behind us that I had just went in front of, went right past us by maybe this much, very close. So that was quite scary. And the truck stopped 
and he got out and he asked us if we were okay. And we said we were, the car was still drivable. I think there was a problem with the, one of the wheels that was making kind of a weird sound. And I was sort of frozen. The first car accident, I felt fine. Everything was fine. This car accident, I felt extremely nervous, really scared, really um, on edge. Like I didn't know how to drive anymore. And so we, we were able to drive and I got back on the road, but I was constantly worried about black ice and my hands were shaking and I was nervous. My voice was shaking, I was trying to be calm, be natural, but I, I really was not. And it was a it, it was a weird drive back. I think it was about a 40 minute drive back. And it was very weird and surreal for several reasons. Number one, somehow, for some reason, I realized I don't want to date. I don't want to date this girl anymore. I realized it almost as soon as we had stopped after spinning around. I don't want to date this girl anymore. <laughs> I realized it. This has been this had been someone that I, I I had a crush on for several years. And then suddenly I realized this is not the person I want to be with. Very weird. And it was a sudden realization. And then everything was covered in white. There was a, a, a layer of white over everything. Uh, wherever we were coming into, the area we were coming into had had light snow and it was untouched. Right, you know how after it snows, there's a thin layer and everything is kind of untouched and it looks kind of, kind of magical. So I'm driving this car, suddenly realizing the condition of my feelings in this relationship as we drive along, surrounded in this blanket of white, thin, very thin white, right? Shivering, shaking from nervousness because I'm worried that I don't know how to drive anymore because I, I just spun out and almost been killed by a semi-truck and it was very surreal it was like driving through a dream and I thought this this as I was doing it I was thinking this is not real this is a dream how is this happening something had happened in my mind that made life somehow different it was a very weird experience it was like a switch and as though the world were responding to my new mental, my new emotional outlook on life. <laughs> Maybe it's because I had almost died. I don't know. As though the world were responding to that. About halfway home, about halfway back to my university dormitory, we looked over and among the vast whiteness, right in the middle of the vast white snow, was a huge, very nice, very nice house. And it was burning. And there was nobody around. There were no fire trucks. There were no people outside looking at the house. Their house that was burning down. It was like a cartoon fire. It was very strange. It was like a dream. This house was just burning down. A very, very nice, huge house in a big yard, surrounded with, with a big yard and a lot of snow around it. And it was just burning to the ground. And no one was around trying to put out the fire. And no one was outside. And I have no idea what happened. It was very weird. And it was sort of like that thing just confirmed that, yeah, you are in a, this is a different place now. You, you have moved into a new mental space. And I think I've been there ever since. And the, 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 the house burning down was sort of the confirmation. Yep. The, 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 the switch has been flipped. <laughs> welcome to, welcome to uh, this new version of yourself. It was really weird. And that's the only time that I've ever had anything like that happen. And uh, we got back. And I think we broke up shortly after that. And then I think after that, I... I don't really remember what happened in my life after that, but that was a it seemed like a very important moment for me. And I'm not sure if it's because I felt that I was close to death or if something else had happened. I'm not sure. I still don't completely understand it, but it was like a switch got flipped. Very weird. So the first one was kind of a 
fun story. And the second one, not a serious accident, no real serious damage to the car, I think, but definitely more of a, an emotional change. So those are my two car accidents. I know that I've gone on and on, but I think they're, I think they're pretty interesting stories. And uh, if you have similar stories, interesting stories, stories of what's called synchronicity, the burning house after this strange mental change, this is called synchronicity. If you have any stories like this you'd like to share, please let me know in the comments. And also, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe, and also check out my links, my courses in the links in the description. Thank you.